89.9 Light FM in conversation with Clayton and joining me is a man who you probably saw on the telly last year you really couldn't miss him because he was uh, a bit of the superstar of The Voice winning The Voice 2013 Harrison Cray he joins me in the studio g'day mate uh, hey, how are you? I didn't know what I was going for there. <laughs> it's all right. It's always what you. happens. It's great to have you in. And, uh, you know, you have sort of gone from someone who had this incredible voice uh, and, you know, loved the, the art of singing to someone who's got an incredible voice, loves the art of singing, and really well known within a, a short <laughs> space of time. How's life been over the past couple of years, sort oh, of riding that journey? It's been crazy. I mean, the past kind of year. Um, year and a half uh, it's just been nuts like you know absolutely uh crazy i can't even describe it i mean um you know when you come to the the end of the year you know it's it's always a blast to you know think about you know okay january i did this blah blah, blah i did this now i'm doing this whoa you know that yeah. was a lot you know i've done a lot um but it's been great i mean it's so much fun and I, i'm i'm just you know very thrilled to be doing yeah. what, what i love to do yeah exactly right but there's got i mean there's an aspect for you too that you know, especially last year and we're going to talk a whole lot about what you're doing you know you're about to you're in the middle of writing your third third album as yes. well you, yeah the carols by count we're going to chat all about that as we go through too but you know you sort of look at a, a year like what you did you know you start off in january what do i have mm. to achieve by this year probably you know getting up the top of the aria charts by the end of that year wasn't necessarily going to be a realistic goal but yeah. but that's what happened you know flurry of life yeah yeah look i mean um you you kind of um plan out things that you want to achieve and during that year they might change or grow or um or you might hit them in the first you know two months and you go okay great you know i thought that would take me through to the end of the year but yeah. obviously not what you know what am I doing from, the next you know, from, yeah, from yeah. here on now you know kind of thing and um, it's just great I mean you know there never s- seems to be a a um, moment where you know I can just stop it's yeah. always just run 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 go go yeah. go do this but I just love it I think yeah. it's great I was about to say it seems like you love it though so it's just fun. awesome yeah <laughs> let's start back at, at the start a bit in terms of love of music and when mm. you even discovered that you had hey I got a voice it's all right here and you know obviously there's a lot of training that goes into all these sorts of things that that happens for you and and you know to get to a level that you can get to but when was it that you actually discovered that singing is a real big thing for me yeah um probably when I was um Nine or ten. Um, I used to. I, well, the first record that I ever bought um, uh, was um, Ricky Martin. Yep. Um, and that was probably when I was about nine. Um, and then it was the Eminem Slim Shady mix. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and then I kind of branched off. But um, but yeah, no, I joined a choir when I was about ten. Um, and I was there for about a year and a half yeah. and I really, I, th- you know, I thought it was great, but I got kind of tired of it. It wasn't really for me. Um, so then I, um, you know, uh, started to get private, um, classes. Yep. Uh, and then from there I kind of would, uh, do cafes and everything like that yeah. and perform. And, um, it's just great. I, you know, like it actually brings back so much, um, uh, well, you know, I guess memories about what, uh, where it all started, you know, and how it all started and what you were actually feeling. And then it, it's just great. I think yeah, it's so cool. It's good. Um, it, it, singing run in the family or you're a bit sort of one out of well, the box? Well, says my nan. Um, yeah. You know, she says, uh, you know, oh, it's from my side of the family. From my side of the family. <laughs> yeah, so I go, okay, okay nan, you can have nan. that one. You know, no worries. <laughs> you got it. Th- thank you, nan. Um, but she's great. And um, yeah, so she's always been a big supporter of mine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we're all pretty musical, I suppose. Yeah. So, uh, so that's always handy. I've, you know, um, got the people there that want to actually give me, uh, you know, um, feedback on what I'm working on or something, yeah. which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Take me through the... the um what it, what it was like for you to go, um, you know, through this situation, and, and we know a lot of people know a lot about your story. You know, mm, yeah. um, I, I work in radio. I understand the value of story and, and painting a picture story. And you know, going on the Voice, a lot of people suddenly learned a whole lot about you. They learned yeah. about you know the, the stutter that you've had and how you overcame that. Yeah, they yeah. learned about what happened in family life with you, you know your mum being a rock, but you know not much other support around that. These sorts of things. Yeah, what was it like going through that and having suddenly? 
publicly, not everyone just hearing your voice, because that's sort of almost dramatic enough as it is, but <laughs> something your life being known by everybody. Yeah. Uh, how did you cope? Um, at first, um, you know, I suppose because, uh, you know, you win a um, reality program like that and everyone's very, you know, very protective of you wanting to make sure you're okay and then after that once you kind of um you begin to really um uh run on your own as per se you yeah. know um you know you kind of learn how to handle that um that security just on your own um yep. you know as in terms of you know just um managing what's personal and what's not you know yeah. kind of thing yeah. um but look you know i love to share as much as I can because I think that really it creates a a kind of um a you know like a a real relationship between mm. you and the audience yeah. and yeah. the more that they know about you the more you can feel in touch with them yeah they with you and you just it just you know, goes right into the sky from there. Yeah. I mean, it's great. Um, so, so I think it's really important that you do share everything. So I'm not too fussed about any, yeah, anything sure. like that, yeah. you know, but, uh, but yeah. But vulnerability has that uh, impact on people, doesn't it? Sometimes it can challenge, inspire, it can encourage. Exactly, and, and so yeah. So you have to be vulnerable to actually have those opportunities I think sometimes so, yeah. as well. I agree, I agree. My guest is Harrison Craig. He is uh, the winner of The Voice uh, 2013. He's also the uh, ambassador this year for the Light a Candle campaign for Vision Australia's Carols by Candlelight. We're going to be back having a chat to all things the carols, but also a bit more of uh, Harrison's life too in just a couple of minutes' time here on Light FM. In conversation with Clayton. 89.9 Light FM in conversation with Clayton and Harrison Craig. You yeah, remember Harrison won The Voice last year, 2013. He's also the ambassador for the Light a Candle campaign for Vision Australia's Carols by Candlelight, which we're going to be simulcasting right here on Christmas Eve here on Light FM. Um, you've been actually touring around uh, around the world. I know, you know, Seal, who was your mentor on The, the Voice, actually yes, had you yeah. performing some places, but plenty of other places around the world you've been performing too. Can you... Let, let us know a couple of the different countries you visited and what you've been um, up to. Yeah, well, I went to um, France, uh, to Italy. Um, where else did I go? Um, I went across um, to the US as well. And oh, I, yeah. I uh, you know, from there I've been writing and, um, you know, recording over there. And that's been so much fun. Um, and I've met some incredible, incredible people there that are so yeah. talented. It was just great. So, it, you know, it was really great for me to work with them um, and work on some great material. Yeah, that's um, it. So it was really, really fun. But, I mean, traveling the world, there's just so much stuff you cannot learn unless you kind of are traveling there, yeah. um, you know, and you're, you're actually completely a part of the environment. Spot on. Uh, but it was great, though. I mean, I learned so much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah it's so cool. Now, I, you know, I think you've branded your, your sort of style popera, you know, a bit of pop, bit of opera mixed together. Mm. Now, they, they love their, you know, big tenors and they love all their singers you know, yeah. over in Italy and, and France. How did they take your, your style? <laughs> it was really interesting um, because I think there's, you know, that, col- um, that kind of... Uh, um, uh, there's a... When you're there, people think of the opera um, genre, you know, as being, you know, very um, one way, straightforward. This is the way it is, and it's not going to change, kind of thing. But I think it's really cool when you do come in and you do bring that change to it. People start to look at it, you know, in a different kind of light and yeah. it really expands um the the audience and the kind of style of it all just you know m- massively yeah. so um it's just yeah it was, it was really cool to see yeah really it's the cool game. To see. now you know you're a melbourne melbourne boy yes and uh and you know here and i'm not sure how much everyone realizes the story of carols by candlelight but basically melbourne invented carols by candlelight and then yeah. it's sort of gone around the world so yeah. to be involved in you know the, the carols and be um, an ambassador for, for you know light a candle campaign it must be pretty pretty thrilling to actually be a part of it in your home hometown magical I think it's great um watching it every year you know and you think yeah. wow this that's so cool I wish yeah. I could be part of that and I uh, know I am which is yeah. you know great and because of um you know my my kind of um uh, last year you know um traveling around mm. working on it all you kind of get that um that kind of knowledge there on what it 
will be like and you can bring all this uh, you know flair and everything yeah, to it. it it's just great it's so cool that's cool and, and i mean i'm assuming it comes with a guaranteed gig to get to sing on the night as well not just have to talk about it behind uh, the scenes yeah. <laughs> that's that's i'm glad, glad that that's that occurred um, in, in that regards you know what does what does it actually mean does it mean you get wheeled out for the interviews uh you know you come on radio with clayton and have a chat to him i mean is that that pretty much it or do you do no it's stuff? great no i actually requested you so i said oh well, like you're now, you. oh, now you know how to work in house and i'll tell you what that's the go <laughs> um no look look um being a part of it is a great chance to, to actually really talk about what it's all about and why we're all there because it's a you, you know it's a great night out and you get to have um so much just joy being there but it's great to also keep in mind why we why we're there and yeah. who we're there for you know and you know and that's uh kind of what it's really about you know talking about people that need it the most and yeah, you know we're right. we're supporting them all so yeah. it's just great exactly right and uh, i love that uh, that it can have that fundraising element as be part of just that what what it is it's you know it's part of the culture of part of the fabric of melbourne oh exactly on, on exactly. christmas eve it really is indeed um you know you said you're doing the third third album yes uh, where who to from here is there is there a couple of those things on you know harrison craig's checklist that he just wants to go Got to tick this off. Got to make sure I've covered this off um, in the next little while. Yeah, yeah, there is. There is. Um, you know, I've been talking about um, quite a few of those th- things for kind of like the last um, year now that I've really wanted to do. Um, so I've been really, um, you know, just, you know, in talks and planning and really w- working out what what they are, w- where I w- want to do them, ha- you know, in what kind of way the 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 uh, who I want to work with, all that kind of stuff. Um, and now it's kind of coming to nice. fruition, which is yeah. great. So, uh, so, so you're going to just tease year, us? We're going to tell us next about year will be a, what's going a lot on of, um, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. I can't believe this thing. <laughs> oh, what is this? No, 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 no. Um, so yeah, so next year will be tons of travel um, right around the world, which Good will be you. great. Um, you know, just a lot of, I think, work in prepping for my third album, which yeah. um, is just going to be great. Yeah. Uh, it's great stuff. <laughs> now, I know that um, earlier in the year, you also did uh, a special sort of Mother's Day style concerts for you know, Sydney, Melbourne. I think it was Brizzy as well. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's pretty obvious that the ladies love you, mate, whether they're <laughs> the, the older ones or the younger ones. Um, <laughs> how has that been? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's always nice to go, oh, the ladies are liking me. But how do, you, how do you actually cope with that when they're all maybe screaming out and going on? <laughs> What do you do? How, how do you how do you just live with life like that? Oh, look! I think it's definitely um, something you have to get used to. Um, but um, I think it is always humbling to know people actually want you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's really really cool. Um, but I think um, it's important to 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 know what you're after and kind of. I mean, for me, I, you know, I always say I'm kind of. Married to the job, yeah. So, you know, so so that's my girlfriend. So so you know. So, but um, but I love it. It's great, and um, you know, like you know, just everyone's so so yeah. so fantastic. It's just awesome. That's great. Well, we're going to be simulcasting the uh, the Carols by Candlelight here at Light FM, and I'm sure a whole lot of us are going to be watching you on the telly as well, mate. On that night, uh, good luck with uh, you know being the ambassador for Light of Candlelight and that third studio album. It's Thank been you. great having you and just having a chat. Oh, and it's just been a thrill.